In this Profoto 6 beta video, we're going to discuss the template system in Profoto 6. If you haven't already seen the video describing the layout editor and how to work with site, block, row, and column items, please go view that video first. We'll link it here in this video and below so that you can check that out. In our previous video, we showed that templates can be used to customize the look and layout of specific page types and specific pages of our WordPress setup. So let's get into that here and we'll take a look at the uh, original design using a base template for all of the customization settings. I can click this button at the top of my layout editor to create different templates. And by default, base is the only template, but I can click to create a child template of that, and I'm gonna give it a name, no masthead image, because in this layout, I'm gonna remove the image that appears at the top of my normal layout. You'll see I deleted my widget, and I'll refresh my page to see my... Hmm, interesting, the changes aren't applied. That's because this particular template hasn't been applied anywhere yet. Using the template assignments page, you can see that base, here, 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 and all the other areas is the only template being used. By choosing no masthead image as my child template for the posts page, and applying that assignment to my site, I'll notice that when I refresh the site, now my image has been removed, modifying my layout from the original base template design. I notice here the logo is still being applied, and I don't really want it there anymore. I want to move it to a different position. So let's make another change to this specific child template. And we'll find our widget here in this column that we want to use. I'll create a new column in my header area next to my menu. I want my logo to appear next to the rest of my links. I'll change the width and drag my Profoto Images widget to that new column. Since I don't need this empty column down here anymore, I'll delete that, leaving just my left and right social media menus. Refresh the page and you'll notice the logo appears on the same line as the menu in a new column. Now what if I want that row to match the width of everything else? Let's edit the row for this particular area of my header. The main block of my layout has 10% padding on the left and right sides, so I'll click to edit this particular row's padding settings, and I'll drag the controls to 10% for the left and the right and save my changes. When I refresh the page, I notice that that row now has 10% padding to match the rest of my site. But there's a white background color, so let's also edit this template to remove that background color. I'll click to edit the background color. I'll click the clear button to set it to no background color. Save my changes. When I refresh the page, I notice that the background color is gone. Since my column on the right where my menu appears doesn't have any background anymore, there's a bit of a gap. I'm going to make another change so that the column has the same color as my menu. Just real quick, I'll pop into the menu area and copy the color value for my menu from the appearance area. Then I'll come back to my layout editor, and I'm going to add the color to this column background color value. I'll click to override the color, paste the value, save my changes, and then refresh my page. Cool, now my column has that same background color as my menu. Let's adjust my browser window to see how everything reacts. I noticed that my logo didn't remain centered in its column when I changed the size of my browser. Let's edit that column, modify the alignment for widgets, choose centered, save the changes, and refresh our page. Ah, there we go. Now when we resize the browser to different sizes, it stays centered. But it looks like there's no background color for this column either. Since the clear background is being inherited from the rest of the design, I'm going to have to apply my background color to this column as well. Save my changes. And notice that when I resize my browser, the column now centers my logo, and the same color is applied to the column as a background. Great, I'm pretty happy with the results now. I'm going to return to the template assignments area, and I'm going to use this new template that I created for a few more pages of my design. It's not applied to my static homepage type, but it is on my blog posts page. I'd like to use it also for the pages types, 
single posts types, really I want it to be applied to all other page types in my site. So I'll apply this to all these types. When I go modify a page like this, I notice on the right side the Profoto template selection box. This is where I can choose which template to apply on a per page basis. Using the drop box, I see all the templates that I've created in a nice list. Whenever I create a page on my site, I simply choose the template I want to apply. I can reuse the same template for lots of pages if they're supposed to be different from my assignment screen. You can create templates that can be used for individual pages and select them like this anytime. When you work on your design, use your base template for the majority of your changes. Then, using child templates, you can adjust those settings and appearance and layout for specific purposes. Your main settings should be applied into your base template. And remember, the settings are inherited into your child templates, so any changes you make to your base template are going to be reflected in the child templates as well. And those are the basics of templates and template assignments.